So good morning once again. Please take your seats so we can begin. Um, maybe for starters, you might have noticed that there's a bit of a water shortage um, due to a misunderstanding uh, with the caterer, but we are getting water so as soon it should be here any minute. And with that, I would like to welcome you all to the second day of our two events uh, in one, Agrada Plus and Clusters Meet Regions here in Zagreb. I believe that yesterday we already um, discovered and discussed many, many aspects of uh, regional and socio, um, social and regional economic development. And today we will begin day two by exploring one particular aspect in more detail, which is cross-border cooperation, which is of course uh, especially important for border regions in order to overcome the barrier effects of borders. And um, we will soon discover how many actors, and uh, those include regional development agencies, of course, but also clusters can facilitate in overcoming these barrier effects that have proven to be very um, uh, abide or as um, attempts at the European level to overcome the barrier effects of borders and to make them more permeable. They have proven, proven to be quite um, long-lasting. And with that, I would like to give the floor to our moderator of the session, Adela Franja. Please, Adela, the floor is yours. To everybody, uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here and to, uh, to be the moderator of this session. Uh, I represent uh, uh, one of the Interreg programs, the uh, Adria, Adrian program, which uh, uh, deals with uh, the cooperation across the border. So it's a pleasure for me to uh, moderate this panel that uh, is focused mainly on uh, Interreg, but even uh, on other EU instruments supporting the cooperation uh, among, uh, uh, across the borders. Interreg has been born to uh, tackle the, um, uh, the problematics, the challenges uh, affecting the regions across the borders, uh, trying to find uh, uh, solutions, uh, common solutions in different fields, from uh, environment to research and innovation, transport, energy, and so on. Quite all the Interreg programs, uh, independently from the, the different strands, uh, if we are speaking about the CBC or transnational ones or interregional, uh, dedicate and devote a, a special attention to innovation, as uh, innovation is, uh, um, can be central uh, and important for uh, the uh, construction of a smarter and greener economy that can withstand uh, uh, the future uh, economic shocks and crisis. So innovation more than ever has been, uh, um, this crisis demonstrated that is the, the right uh, field on which we should invest in order to cope with all the difficulties that uh, uh, can, can be, uh, we can have even in the future. Innovation in uh, the context of uh, uh, the interact programs is conceived uh, as a sort of uh, uh, cross-cutting issue that is uh, uh, encompassing different sectors. And in the same way, trying to uh, construct uh, a smart and efficient uh, innovation ecosystems. Different analyses that have been uh, 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 realized in the Adriatic and Union area demonstrate that there is a need to increase the uh, collaboration between the public administration, research institutions and business uh, uh, communities in order to uh, uh, allow the necessary uh, technology transfer and capacity building. And in this regard, Interreg uh, uh, plays a crucial role as it is supports the construction of innovation uh, networks and partnerships, supports testing of uh, new solutions, uh, scaling up of advanced uh, uh, technologies, the design, encourage the design of new products and services uh, responding to the, to the needs of the citizens, favor the exchange of knowledge and know-how, and uh, uh, support the area through, through uh, capacity building actions, uh, supporting the enhancements of skills in S3 and for industrial transition. At macro-regional level has been also uh, uh, noted that uh, the, the clusters landscape uh, is not uh, uh, yet uh, uh, 
exploiting the advantages and benefits that can be uh, uh, realized coming out from the uh, cooperation. Therefore, uh, there is a need to work uh, more on the consolidation on the existing clusters, on the favoring the, the, the new clusters, but even to uh, enforce the cluster-to-cluster -cluster partnerships. And in this regard, Interreg can give uh, uh, um, a lot of uh, support. Uh, the creation of networks uh, which uh, uh, include inside the so-called quadruple helix actor is very relevant because uh, it is important not only to uh, concentrate on the triple uh, uh, actors but even to have inside the view of the citizens in order to, uh, to deliver on the ground uh, innovation which fits perfectly the necessities of the citizens. And in this regard, clusters support the interaction and facilitate the collaboration of these stakeholders along the most important value chain and create in this way the preconditions for the delivery of uh, uh, new technologies, uh, uh, new products, uh, enhancing in the same way the growth and competitiveness of the area. This panel would like to bring to the attention uh, of the audience uh, what, is the, uh, what is the importance of the uh, Interreg and EU fund, funded instruments uh, uh, for the, uh, uh, the collaboration among, among the, the, the actors, but even for facilitating the innovation in the area. Uh, the panel uh, brings together uh, different views of different actors, going from the national authorities to regional and uh, national agencies to clusters which are important, and to uh, the private sector. Um, so we will start with the first panelist that is representing the, the Croatian government, uh, the Ministry of Regional Development and New Funds, Mr. Uh, Kovac, which is uh, the head of the sector of, uh, uh, for coordination of ETC programs and uh, macro-regional strategies. Uh, he holds a, a master degree on geography and history of the, from the University of Zagreb and has dedicated part, most of his career, to uh, the regional de development and the management of EU funds, uh, participating and representing the Croatian government in a different uh, monitoring committees of various uh, uh, ATC programs. Uh, Croatia, due to its uh, uh, specificity and geographical location, has the, uh, the advantage to participate in several uh, ATC programs of different types, uh, uh, CBC, transnational, interregional. So it's, it's very uh, interesting for us to have the, what is the experience of the Croatia in participating in these uh, uh, ATC programs, but not only even in the macro-regional ones, because Croatia is participating not only on the uh, Adriatic and in Union um, uh, macro-region, but is also in Danube, uh, in a Danube one. The floor is yours, Ms. Love. Uh. Okay, that's nice, good. Uh, thank you very much, Adela, and uh, good morning also from my side. Uh, yesterday I was here, so I don't have to introduce uh, myself. Like Adela said, I'm dealing uh, mostly or completely with the European territorial cooperation and macro regional uh, strategies. In our ministry, we are responsible for 11 programs out of 13 in which Croatia participates uh, in the European Territorial Cooperation Program. So we have five cross-border, four transnational and four uh, inter-regional uh, programs. Experience that we have in those programs is, of course, very, uh, very positive. We learn a lot. Uh, I, can, um, I can share with you how all of this process went because Croatia, like I uh, emphasized yesterday, uh, was the, the newest member of um, EU. And when, we, uh, when uh, we started this programming period, I mean current programming period 14, uh, 20, in the programming phase we were non-EU member state. 
and uh, this change of, let's say, mind of the attitude that, and everything was, uh, of course, quite challenging. But now when I look at uh, those times, I see that we change a lot and we, of course, improved not only our system, but also our capacities. And I think the, the added value uh, of the European territorial cooperation in Croatia is really the building of capacities, especially of, uh, for example, small municipalities, small cities, those institutions which doesn't have usual capacity in order to implement uh, those, uh, those programs. With uh, the European Territorial Cooperation programs, uh, they learn how to deal with the European Union funds, they learn how to uh, even, you know, make the public procurement, bigger public procurement, which always presents the obstacles in the, in, in, in the project. They, uh, of course, uh, bring the European, um, uh, European sense in their, uh, in, in, in their yard, if I, if I may say uh, like that. So, uh, from that period and from the starting point when we, uh, of course, started uh, in, in, in European territorial cooperation, now we come to the period that, of course, we have uh, key players, uh, which are for sure uh, our regional development agency, but also our university, our other institution, also our ministries, who are playing important role in all of these uh, programs. They are, of course, not only uh, participating in those programs, because back, I'm now comparing, let's say back then, it was important only to participate, but now we are uh, having the lead partners of those projects, of those initiatives, the institution who are uh, presenting their ideas and their uh, initiatives to the other, uh, Either we are uh, speaking about the cross-border prog uh, cross programs or a transnational program with a narrow or wider uh, consortium. So this is um, uh, this is the the, 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 the main uh, uh, the main goal of uh, European territorial cooperation. And as, as I already said, the the, the the biggest added value because it really helps to transform the institutions and help them. Uh, to understand the European uh, Union funds, how everything is, um, how everything is um, uh, now um, the rules and, and, and how everything is functioning. And also it creates a prerequisites for the uh, larger uh, investments. So when I'm, uh, when I'm, uh, when I'm uh, speaking about this, we have a lot of projects that, for example, through the European Territorial Cooperation, through the Interreg Cooperations, made either documents or either cooperations that, uh, that was um, seed for the future, for the future uh, larger story. For example, uh, we have uh, with, uh, in cross-border program with Slovenia, cooperation with Croatian waters and the relevant uh, water institutions in Slovenia. And along the border, they cooperate together. They create not only the documents, but the maps, but the, also uh, some uh, early warning system. And now, all along, all along our border, we have a joint, uh, really cross-border, uh, cross-border cooperation, uh, and uh, I mean, this is also uh, we have we have a quite a, quite well cooperation, and also um, they now are um, they are now planning also um, I mean joint investment. So, for example, because of course not, floods d doesn't know the, the 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 border and it doesn't recognize the border. So this is um, this is something that it really creates uh, creates um, a, a, a lot of importance not only for Croatia but also from our uh, from our states uh, in the neighborhood. As you said, not, not only that we are participating in the European territorial cooperation, we have a macro-regional strategies who are part of the, the, the cohesion policy are, and are very aligned with the Interreg programs. 
uh, we are participating in two in Adriatic Union and the uh, Danube, uh, Danube strategy. In the Danube strategy, for example, you have a pillar which is led by Croatian Baden-Württemberg who has a really strong emphasis on the cluster and the cluster policy and development of the cluster and uh, they have a subgroup in their thematic, uh, in their um, one of the thematic groups is dedicated uh, to cluster. Uh, so I invite all of you, all of uh, the countries who are part of that strategy to, 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 to see and maybe to, uh, if, if, if you are interested to, uh, to be included in their um, work. But what is, for example, uh, regarding the macro-regional strategy important and what is experience of Croatia, and this is something that we also very much um, emphasized during our presidency of the Danube strategy back in 2020, is the process of the embedding. Uh, the embedding is simply the process in which all participating countries of the macro-regional strategies agree on the priorities, but not those, let's say, thematic that are usually uh, part of the, or are the pillars of the, of the strategy. So, for example, we have uh, tourism as a, as a thematic field, but also within the tourism we have some priorities that we need to deal with. And uh, we, at the beginning of this programming period, 2021-2027, uh, started to uh, negotiate and then we finally agree about a uh, few priorities per thematic within the macro-regional strategies that have potential uh, and that can be included in all our national programs and also our cross-border programs. This is something related that I was telling you about the floods because, for example, if we identify those uh, that as a priority in the region, this is something that then Croatia, Slovenia, Hungary, and any other country who is participating in the strategy, either in the Danube or in the Adriatic Union, should be focused and align uh, and uh, align with. And this is, I think, a very good tool and a very good example of cooperation because, of course, we should not spend uh, public money uh, public money on the investments and uh, on the investments that doesn't have. I would say a logic or that is doesn't align in the wider or uh, bigger picture. So this is something that we work on very hard for the last two or three years. And uh, I think that we succeed because in all our national mainstream programs, uh, we, have, um, uh, we have those macro-regional priorities. Now we are trying in the implementation phase to see how we can with the neighboring country, whether to have some um, um, coordinated calls. So, for example, if we have a if we have a call for a specific area, whether we can, with the managing authority of other countries, have a coordinated call so that uh, those uh, investments and uh, projects will be aligned. But also to give some additional uh, additional points for the for those uh, macro regional priorities that are out of the scope of Croatia itself. But I think that uh, <laughs> practical example will give Stjepan, who is dealing with uh, those kind of things. Thank, thank you, thank you, uh, Mislav, for uh, very interesting. I know that you could, you could uh, uh, speak more than this, but the time that we have at our disposal is so is limited. So it's uh, it's very interesting to to have the uh, from uh, from you uh, the experience of Croatia as the youngest uh, member state joining that can be a, a sort of inspiration even for the other countries that uh, are approaching and would like to join the, the European Union. So uh, if we can uh, summarize what you said, it's so interesting. To, uh, to, to have uh, uh, this uh, support in capacity building at a national level. And uh, what is uh, very important uh, for uh, in the interact programs to have these leverage effects that go beyond their projects and go towards the uh, investments that we would like to favor in the area. 
And uh, what it is also important uh, that you highlighted is also embedding. So an, an excellent tool that can support the alignment among uh, the priorities of the macro-regionals on one side, the interreg programs and other EU instruments in order to bring what the, the Commission would li uh, likes, the real added value, and to, to use in the right way the resources uh, that are coming from the EU uh, together with the national uh, ones. Now, uh, the floor uh, goes to Mr. Stepan Markovic, that still represents the Ministry of uh, uh, Regional Development and EU Funds, uh, uh, but from another perspective. So, he is the head of the Service for the Coordination of EU uh, Instruments and Fulfillment of uh, Enabling Conditions. Uh, he holds a Master Degree in Economics uh, uh, and uh, a Master Business Administration from the University of Zagreb, has dedicated his uh, uh, career mainly on the strategic planning uh, processes for the development of the public uh, policies in Croatia and uh, has a, a focus uh, on uh, smart specialization and in industrial transition. So uh, how the industrial transition uh, works in uh, Croatia and uh, how, how this process is supported by the EU instruments? What are the opportunities and challenges uh, for the companies to join the value chains? Thank you, thank you, Adela. Um, uh, really pleased to be today uh, here with you. Uh, yes, uh, Mislav and I had to divide our, uh, our time, so I have around seven minutes to say something about the industrial transition process in Croatia. It's an initiative that uh, started two years ago in Croatia, and uh, uh, the main goal uh, for, for this process is to enhance regional value chains for the regions that are catching up in Croatia. So what's been happening is that the statistical regions uh, had a change uh, uh, a year, uh, something about a year uh, uh, ahead of us. And uh, the city of Zagreb uh, had its indicators for the development, uh, uh, the development indicators above the EU average. So we had three regions that are lagging behind the EU, uh, EU average uh, indicators of development. So we wanted to see how we can enhance uh, the competitiveness of those regions. Uh, industrial transition is the mechanism or the uh, instrument we uh, tackled and for the last two years we've been developing plans for industrial transition for those three regions of Croatia. So it's the Pannonian region, mainly the Slavonia, Baranja and Srem, uh, added with uh, uh, three more counties, uh, then the North Croatia and the Adriatic Croatia, and finding uh, what are the smart specialization initiatives for them, how those regions would like to see the future of their specialization and try to identify some of the priority niches for those regions in which they can uh, be more competitive in the future. Uh, of course, we try to... Uh, to put those priority niches in some regional value chains. The idea is to uh, enhance the competitiveness of those regions so that companies from those regions and uh, possibly strategic partnerships later on could join European value chains or global value chains and uh, uh, start cooperating with other countries or other regions. So that's one of the points that could be on this panel, the connection uh, uh, regarding the topics of the panel. Uh, so, uh, the whole start is uh, maybe even with the strategic planning process in Croatia. I have been involved for four or five years in, into that. Uh, Croatia has a regional strategic objective, which is balanced regions of Croatia. And uh, we contribute with the, with the indicator positioning also at enhancing the regional competitiveness of those three regions. Some of the key implementation mechanisms or directions of change that we want to, to do with enhancing those regional value chains, it's uh, aiming at forming strategic partnerships for innovation. And that's the majority of the part of the allocation. So we want to see new products or services, new innovative products for the strategic partnerships. We also want to uh, uh, form new innovation clusters that uh, whose role would be to promote uh, 
uh, strategic partnerships and to internationalize those partnerships. So joining uh, platforms, EU platforms uh, for the innovation classes and for its members and promoting uh, strategic partnerships to join new initiatives at the EU level. Also, we want to uh, see how the small and medium-sized enterprises and startups could be part of those strategic partnerships. So innovation classes should have a crucial role in connecting, matchmaking uh, those partnership, part, uh, those entrepreneurs and startups and uh, joining them and strategically form some action plans that could lead to the development of new products or services. Uh, of course, uh, Croatia a bit lags behind in the in the smart skills sector also. So we are uh, trying to uh, form uh, with the with the stakeholders that could offer those expertise. We are trying to form pacts for the smart skills development also for uh, towards the priority niches. So we are building up the whole ecosystem for the transition of those regions to be more competitive and to uh, more easily join in the future European value chains. Uh, what is uh, also really important is that uh, it cannot be done only on one level. So uh, it's a really, Croatia is a small country, but it's a really complex <coughs> uh, level of coordination for, for industrial transition to happen. So we have uh, my ministry, uh, which is in charge for the regional uh, development and also coordinating body for the EU funding. Then we have uh, Ministry of uh, Economy and Sustainable Development, Ministry of Science and Education, which are the uh, leading ministries for the development of smart specialization strategy. Uh, also, we have uh, counties at the regional level and county development agencies who did support us in uh, the whole process of industrial transition. We have interregional coordination, we have macro strategies. Uh, how to fit all those in is to all together create the whole ecosystem which supports not only the industrial transition but also other uh, instruments that could lead to the, to the future of joining uh, or transnational uh, or interregional cooperation. Uh, the orchestration of uh, the whole process uh, should be done through continuous talks. Continuous meetings, it's an everyday job and uh, we, we try to, to communicate to all stakeholders uh, regularly. Uh, lots of workshops, lots of uh, uh, platforming, lots of uh, stimulating cooperation. What have we done to support it? It's we created the institutional capacities that follow up that. We have coordination councils at the county level for each regions. Uh, regional development agencies are parts of the working teams. And uh, we did the mapping of the uh, whole uh, sectors of those regions. So we had strategic forums that are aggregated around regional value chains. And in that way, we have a comprehensive uh, entrepreneurial discovery process tool for, for those regions. And uh, I just, for the finish, I don't think that I have much time, maybe want to point out uh, on an example how uh, this could work in the future or what, what are the opportunities for all stakeholders to, to look for. Uh, so, yeah, Mislav uh, talked about macro-regional strategies and um, under the uh, Interreg Adrion, uh, we have uh, a Blue Air project uh, with uh, lots of partners, of course, uh, from different regions that are part of the uh, Adrion uh, included in the project. And um, it's uh, focused on the Blue growth, so it's one of the regional value chains also for the Adriatic Croatia. Uh, and the Ministry of Regional Development as the national body is uh, an associated party in that project. So uh, the main results uh, for this uh, Blue Air project would be the development of an innovation strategy for the area of blue growth and an action plan uh, on how to invest on innovation and improvements in the blue growth areas. How does all that has been done under the industrial transition fit into that? So we have 
uh, our national body, the ministry, which are part of the project. We have the blue growth uh, strategic forums uh, gathered around uh, the blue growth area or blue growth region value chain. And we can communicate with those stakeholders. It's, it's uh, around 200 of firms, uh, scientific organization and other uh, stakeholders that are important for for the blue growth, which give input, inputs to uh, the results that will uh, happen uh, under this project. So we can identify what are the priorities for the blue growth in the trans-regional cooperation in the future and position them in strategic documents, which will, of course, lead to the future calls. So uh, that will be one of the examples. I think uh, that it's a good moment for Croatia also for uh, enhancing those regional value chains. You, we witnessed lots of disruptions in the uh, last couple of years. So countries are closing, but uh, uh, with uh, positioning yourself or your country or your region at aiming what could be done under the region and then looking for cooperation on the macro regional level, I think uh, that uh, the European Union could be more competitive in the future and of course uh, position uh, as the whole union uh, on a global level. So I don't know if that is enough. It's enough. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for your um, presentation. And then uh, it's a very important to underline that uh, uh, nowadays uh, the innovation, uh, the value change are de uh, de uh, uh, being all um, more global. So it's better to uh, to look uh, not on its own bubble, but to go f uh, far. F Further and uh, in this regard, uh, uh, European territorial cooperation uh, supports the country to go within that direction. Uh, participation uh, in territorial cooperation supports to rights the competitiveness uh, inside uh, the regional value change, but uh, gives also opportunity for the the national uh, stakeholders to join the the European value change and then having a vision for the future partnerships. So now, uh, the floor uh, goes to, to Mr. Campobasso, which represents here Informest, so an Italian public agency for international economic cooperation. Um, Mr. Campobasso is an analyst uh, within the analysis and project development area of Informest. Uh, he has a bachelor degree in quantitative economics and social science and uh, has been working uh, for uh, leading market research companies as Nielsen as well as the Institute for the Study and Documentation of the European Community and uh, Eastern Europe based in uh, uh, Trieste has a long experience uh, in uh, Balkans and uh, with EU enlargement uh, and has been uh, uh, a distinguished speaker in different conferences and a lecture to seminars and uh, summer schools related to that. So uh, what is the experience of uh, uh, Informest as an Italian uh, agency uh, in participation in the projects uh, 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 of Interreg projects and what are the, uh, your uh, difficulties and challenges uh, in facilitating the innovation uh, in uh, and facilitating the innovation ecosystems. Thank you, Adela. Uh, good morning to all of you. And uh, so, Informest uh, is a public agency. Uh, it was created in uh, 91, uh, so 31 year story. And uh, in 2008, this portal became a public equivalent body. So uh, all the the unit that was making business services consultancy and uh, also was uh, working with private market operators was externalized. And uh, we left also European um, Enterprise Europe Network that was represented yesterday by, by Miss Tina Pakic. And uh, we became essentially um, in house agency uh, working with the uh, Freedom and Julia Autonomous Region. And uh, the team of innovation that is at the center of uh, the conference, uh, uh, we are more than actors, we are witnesses. 
we are witness uh, uh, with uh, by project because uh, project practices are uh, what uh, are the core of our uh, activity and uh, there is also another reason uh, for this uh, FUG region is more one but it has a very consolidated uh, scientific innovation system and uh, there is ICTP uh, Abdul Salam Center it was the first center of the UN system it was created in 1950 after six clusters going from agri-food uh, to home system and furniture cluster to smart health for incubator uh, light uh, laser light and uh, synchrotron twinned with CERN of Geneva so is a system dense, dense system. This is one of the dimensions that I will go um, over also in uh, the next slide. So, this is uh, Informes, and we are, we are not innovators, but we are uh, witness, witnesses of innovation. So, just a quick look to the nation that is. Uh, hosting this conference. Croatia is the first country in terms of number of closed and ongoing projects, almost 80s, and this is uh, after Italy, obviously, and uh, there are 104 entities with which Informes worked in these years, association, counties, development agency, municipality, ministry. So, these are the last uh, project that we were uh, following as partner, but also in technical assistance to the Friuli Mezza Giulia region. Uh, there are mostly Italy Croatia interregs, but there is also, uh, for example, uh, um, Creatures, that is Adrian project, uh, and uh, other IPA project that we were following in the last uh, programming period. So, what I want to share with you, and uh, I, um, I'm sorry with the, I apologize with the panelists that I didn't share the, my, my slides. Uh, some lesson and observation that Informist uh, has gathered over the years, and uh, we are talking from the perspective of projects and project practices. So, First point, what are the preconditions for effective cross-border collaboration for innovation? So, what we learned that uh, research and innovation system has not to be too dissimilar. Um, or, secondly, the dissimilarity and difference, it is the main takeaway of my presentation, have to be discounted in the concept design. If you don't take as teammate, uh, as partner, the differences, you don't uh, di discount the differences, differences will backfire on the project. Will you will have some problem after. Network density, for example, and the capacity of structures and stakeholders, the supporting policies, they were mentioned now, that our Mr. Markovic and uh, are really, are really re relevant and, uh, for example, you need to know the mapping, the mapping phase that was uh, remembered also yesterday. You need to know how much actors are and typologies of actors and the connection they have in their territory of, the, of, the, of uh, the partnership. Yesterday, on the takeaway session of the panel on wealth and welfare, welfare innovation ecosystems were mentioned as advantages, best practices, sharing a new technology, sharing, but this does mean absorption capacity, and absorption capacity has not to take uh, for sure. There are different level of absorption capacity. I was in a, in a small research center following the adhesion process from 96 to 2004, and we knew all the differences that were in absorption of structural, pre-adhesion structural funds, the capacity, they were completely different. So 
these are really important also in this moment, also in, in Adrian in Adrio area, because you have, you have different level. And uh, other points, for example, and this is uh, typical of Italy, uh, yesterday in uh, the last panel in the cluster driving the digital, digitalization of Croatia, uh, there was a team of gaming and tourism. And uh, for Croatia, this is a team that is uh, challenging. You are in the first phase of uh, the gamification of some tourism, tourist place. Uh, and uh, Florence, uh, Monteregioni, San Gimignano, Venice, Bell Tower was inside Assassin, Assassin's Creed. It is an international Renault game in 2009. This does mean, what does mean this? If in the project we were talking before, you are, you don't to be showy, you have a good domain, you have to be a giver, giver partners. In the partnership, have, there are givers, partners, and receiver partners. And this has to be, be very clear. Uh, in the application forms, also obje uh, um, project objective have to be, take, have to be, uh, um, designed to take account of this. And the activities has to be created and designed in this way, because the differences are between givers and you have to give in the project. If you don't give, you are on the sticking on your point of excellence, the project is, uh, is not working. So, after supporting policy, I just named and quoted the, uh, the the panelists, uh, also in, in the respect, multi-level, multi-actors governance, and the multi-act uh, is often mentioned in application form, but on the, on the ground is, uh, is difficult to align policy, to align strategies, to align programs. Our line are the goals, our harmonize the policy in their factual implementation. This is something that has to be faced is a challenge mostly of the tiny most of the project. And uh, other point, tangible, intangible asset. Yesterday there was a OECD representative, Ms. Travikina, Trav Travikina uh, to talk about intangible assets in, in CCIs, how much they are in different territories, depends for human resources mostly, and uh, you have uh, Policies, uh, you have, uh, for example, financial actors that are used to deal with uh, CCIs. They are not so few. They are few. They are few. After barriers can be of different nature. Regulatory, law, and uh, system of social security system. For example, yesterday we were uh, in the last uh, panel about uh, in the not the last, the last was uh, one of the last panel about health and uh, wealth uh, innovation. It was um, quoted the differences between uh, social security system. Uh, it was a, a true barrier to cooperation on uh, innovation on health. But also there are some structural differences. For example, uh, innovators and regulators are at a different pace are a different space. Please try to conclude. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you, uh, the conclusion that you need to have uh, some, uh, some more coffee meeting, as was said, you had a president yesterday, before to design a, a concept. The, comp the good concept on a projectual, uh, the projectual practice need uh, 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 um, knowledge of the partnership uh, and uh, the, you have to know the partners, you have to know by memory your, for example, your, their territory technology on the smart specialization platform. You have to have, you gather info and you have to use the info to design the concept before to enter in the project. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 
we, we take, uh, we as a program, we take for granted that when you, uh, uh, when, when the stakeholders participate in the projects or interact one, they are well aware of the differences that exist. So, uh, in I'm speaking in my case of uh, a program which uh, involves eight countries, and uh, with the new programming involves ten ones. So. Uh, we totally agree that uh, it's not it's necessary to not under to not underestimate the differences but uh, it's not only a matter of uh, being uh, uh, in advanced stage respect of the other countries because uh, there are givers and recipients but on the other hand even the uh, givers can uh, can uh, uh, benefit for, from this kind of cooperation. So, uh, putting together uh, givers and receivers, sometimes even the givers uh, have the chance to uh, improve their own policies. So, uh, it, what it is important is to enter in this project uh, with the spirit of cooperation. So, the basis is the cooperation. But not to underestimate the differences and on the other hand, to see that change that all the programs uh, as, as mine would like to have needs to, uh, to, uh, to have a long-term vision. So not uh, uh, to, be, uh, uh, to, to be stopped at, at the initial because change uh, uh, is uh, accompanied uh, usually with uh, some resistance. So only when you have uh, clear ideas of your objectives and you go, uh, go ahead uh, with a long-term perspective, you will see the, the results. And now we will pass uh, uh, to the, uh, the distinguished speakers which represent clusters. So the, the, the real heart of the matter of this, uh, this event. Uh, we will start with uh, uh, Mr. Male, uh, who represents uh, one of the uh, uh, well-known Italian clusters, so the Venetian cluster. He's uh, the project manager of the cluster and a member of the cluster. Uh, it is uh, graduated in forestry and environmental science and has a strong experience in environmental resources management and planning, but not only. Uh, also in the management of international cooperation projects, uh, not, on, not only uh, related to environmental field, but also on cultural, so social and productive sectors. He has been, uh, um, has planned and managed, managed uh, several projects uh, projects funded from different sources, going from Interact to Life to Erasmus Plus, uh, and has the opportunity to be part of the wide range of partners and uh, uh, networks. So, uh, it will be interesting for us to understand how the territorial cooperation, uh, among the other uh, EU uh, instruments, has supported the development and consolidation of, the, of your cluster. So, the floor is yours. Hello, uh, good morning everyone. I am Maurizio Malay from Venetian Cluster and I'm going to, uh, to present you a concrete example of what a cluster can do by using European funding. I must say that uh, European funding is a main part of our uh, source of financing, so as a cluster we have to thank European funds in order to sustain the cluster, to exist, and to be able to do all the things we are doing to support our enterprises and our members. As you can see, uh, the cluster is composed by a lot of different and diverse members. So we have, of course, enterprises, and especially SMEs, uh, from the supply chain of the heritage, both uh, historical and cultural heritage, and environmental heritage. Uh, we have universities inside the cluster. We have, of course, professionals. Uh, we have public bodies. So we are able to create networks, uh, project by project. Uh, from time to time, we, we select what are the best actors, the best stakeholders to carry out a particular project and to, uh, to promote a particular idea. Uh, we have around 800 enterprises that are 
receiving um, services that are inside the cluster. We have uh, at least 24 public institutions and we have a lot of partners around the world and we uh, are managing a lot of different projects. And this is, let's say, our toolbox, a part of our toolbox. Uh, as I said, we are working a lot with European funding and we have uh, now around 10 projects uh, open or, or going to start in next year, funded by the EU. And uh, we are using time by time the, 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 the most um, suitable tool considering the program rules, the, the call that is uh, going out, that is published, in order to develop our ideas. So either the idea is starting uh, by the enterprises or by single subjects or by us as a cluster and we are looking for the, the right members to carry out the idea. And now I'm just going to give you uh, a very short presentation of the project uh, that we are carrying out uh, in this period uh, in order to show you how different financing tools and instruments and programs can benefit a cluster from different points of view. As you will see, there is a big variety of themes uh, because we are dealing with a very uh, differentiated environment. Uh, for example, uh, COSME is a very important um, funding program for clusters and we have three COSME uh, projects. One is digital. We are supporting enterprises, small enterprises for digitalization and we are giving to enterprises direct vouchers. So we are distributing EU funding to the enterprises that most merit those fundings because they participate in a specific call for SMEs and they receive funding to carry out their uh, ideas and projects about digitalization. And also we have two Euro cluster uh, projects going on in which we are lead partners. Uh, one is uh, EU rural tourism, so we are creating a Euro cluster about rural tourism and the second one, Friends CCI, we are creating a Euro cluster about uh, creative and cultural industries. Uh, so we are trying to, uh, to create European networks around our specific uh, uh, characteristics and, and specific topics in order to more and more organize European networks around the topics we deal with. Another interesting program for creative industries is Creative Europe, of course. Uh, we have here three projects. One is Tomato. Uh, so we are dealing with uh, creative, cultural and artistic content, especially in museums. So how to transfer uh, knowledge, how to transfer ideas, how to transfer um, the contents of a museum in a more modern and even uh, um, creative way. CREA is a project about a platform for writers and uh, so writers can share their, uh, their works uh, without, uh, um, without problems for their writing rights. So they are, their works are protected by the platform but they can publish them, they can find maybe publishers to, to diffuse their works. And starting in 2023 is Gelato on the Road. We are, uh, we are partner in this project and the project will create an ice cream route around Europe. And this is quite interesting <laughs> because there will be tasting of ice cream from different countries with different local products. Uh, so you see, we have many different and interesting things. How we are uh, working? Uh, of course, there are national, uh, we, we work also with the national funds, with regional funds, 
with local calls, but as I said, these are a minor part because uh, the, our cluster is financed also by the regional government, but with a very small amount that wouldn't be enough to carry out all the work we do and to, to pay for the structure. So again, our, our main focus is Europe, and, and we feel a European cluster, so we are registered in the European Cluster Collaboration Platform, and it is a very good opportunity. We, we were among the 25 clusters in Europe to receive a specific training um, about uh, providing uh, services to enterprises in order to be more sustainable. And this was only dedicated to cluster by the, the cluster collaboration platform. Um, we are part of the European Cluster Alliance. Uh, we are constituting an Italian national cluster, uh, ASSO cluster, so uh, a federation, a group of all, of well, not all, but all the cluster, Italian clusters who want to join in order to be able to organize more nationally the different clusters. And we are inside the regional innovation network. We are recognized as a regional network for innovation by our regional government. All of this to, to underline the importance of networking. Uh, before it was said that, yes, I almost finished, it was said that eco the, the, the word ecosystem was in the slide of Corrado. I am a forester, so for me ecosystems are very important, and we know that ecosystems, they work very well when they are complex, when they are differentiated, where there are many different parts contributing to the well-being of all the system. To conclude, our vision is that the heritage, both cultural and environmental heritage, is an economic value. If it is well used in a sustainable way, can provide uh, economic value to the communities. And I finished. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Male. Uh, very, very interesting uh, uh, presentation, which shows uh, how the combination of the different instruments allows from one hand to respond to the necessities of the cluster members, but even to open a little bit to the variety of the sectors that uh, you mentioned going from innovation, digitalization, and so on. And on the other hand, participating in this, uh, in, uh, in this uh, networks allows even you to exchange views with other uh, clusters and other uh, members of different ecosystems and to provide more uh, adequate uh, services to improve the services that you provide also to your members. Now we will pass uh, to another cluster. Uh, the Slovenian wood industry cluster, which is uh, uh, today represented by Mr. Bernard Likert, uh, who is the consultant of the Slovenian wood industry, industry cluster, with uh, an experience of uh, more than 32 years in the field of wood and furniture, uh, focusing more on the cluster activities, internalization, training, and European research and development projects. He is the head of the Competence Center for the Development of Human Resources in Woodworking and the Operation Director of the Development Center for the Creative Furniture Industry. And it is involved deeply on the uh, stakeholders' ecosystems of the Slovenian wood and furniture sector, as well in the Strategic Research and Innovation Partnership on Smart Specialization. So, um, we, uh, we are interested to know how the, the cluster works and uh, how, what are the benefits that your cluster, from your perspective, um, has gained uh, to participate in projects as uh, the funded from the European Commission and how uh, this type of cooperation has uh, uh, facilitated the innovation in your territories. The floor is yours, Mr. Slicker. Um, also, from my side, uh, warm, warm welcome. Um, I, I will try to be a little bit sure, shorter, just to highlight a few points about uh, our cluster and our activities, and also 
try to uh, give an answer to the question given by the site of the Um So um, our cluster is established in the year 2000. Now we are celebrating 22 years of uh, our operating. Um, they are established by bottom-up approach, so by site of companies, um, but also the, the state and the research institutions gave uh, some contribution to that. Um, we, we have maybe some special, uh, uh, how you say, thing. Um, we uh, developed also special uh, uh, business model, uh, and we cooperate tightly with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the association, the Chamber, and the cluster together, we joined the forces, and um, we worked uh, somehow uh, very uh, hand by hand. Um, oh, in our cluster is at the moment um, 96 companies and institutions. Uh, it's a furniture companies and uh, wood processing companies and uh, a lot of institutions who are dealing uh, in, in our sector. Uh, all together, it's about one third of uh, the Slovenian wood processing and furniture uh, sector. Uh, shortly about our activities, uh, it's a lot of activities, but the main one uh, we can uh, name it is uh, internationalization. We help companies uh, how to go abroad, um, we organize different activities. Uh, the fairs, uh, the delegations, uh, exhibitions, so on. And then it's also our trainings. Um, we have a special uh, center for human research development. And we offer the companies the possibility to, um, I said, give, uh, got uh, some funding and uh, uh, to realize the um, trainings they want and they need. And also, the third field is uh, research, uh, research and development, okay. This is mostly the international projects uh, and some, uh, how you say it, bilateral, um, um, how you say it, activities between the companies and also uh, uh, researchers. Um, yeah, uh, just to mention also, our cluster is also, um, have also co contribute uh, to Slovenia's smart specialization strategy. Uh, namely, uh, Slovenia is, uh, uh, the smart specialization strategy is now running uh, I think um, seven, eight years, something like that. And um, the, the, we have three focus, uh, industry 4.0, uh, digital, and circular. And then after, um, around these three pillars uh, is uh, nine uh, priority domains. And one of those domains is, um, um, a, uh, how to say it, uh, smart building and home, including wood chain. Uh, this is a special, uh, how to say it, uh, uh, field of activities. On uh, each of this, those nine uh, fields, uh, related domains, have special uh, strategic research innovation partnership. This is an uh, uh, initiative uh, composing together uh, as companies, research institutions, but also policy level. So we work together uh, all those years to know each other better, but it's not just focused in one sector, but it's cross-sectorial. Um, and the, the focus is mainly here to smart buildings, smart buildings and uh, interiors in the buildings, so how to develop this field. Um, now we have achieved some pilot projects, um, um, they established some new uh, house uh, buildings uh, full of these uh, smart uh, technologies, for example. This is one concrete uh, house it, uh, results of our activities. Uh, yeah, um, in this field of uh, projects, so uh, helping some companies about um, research and development, uh, we have a, a lot of the, also the different um, projects. Um, they are in different level, so um, we have say try to follow uh, our goals and our, our, our targets, and then we try to, to, to find the proper partners uh, to help, help us to develop this uh, and achieve these goals. And then after that, we're just looking for the proper, I would say, source of funding. Uh, so the source of funding is not the first, but it is the, the third uh, level of uh, our thinking. So, but uh, here is some of them maybe uh, interesting because uh, they are, I would say, it, uh, cross border or, or transnational or, or uh, one. And uh, they allow us, uh, I said, for example, this uh, furniture going international to uh, is a transnational one and uh, help us to support uh, companies with internalization activities. Uh, then we have all view this uh, Erasmus Plus project, 
uh, this uh, wider and uh, sort of pinot level uh, uh, high set network in the field of uh, uh, human resources and uh, trainings. Uh, in the whole, uh, we have also uh, Foresta. Foresta was one project we also worked together with uh, uh, Mrs. Goran Rodic. Uh, from, uh, this, this, this finished it in some years ago. But was very interesting because we um, put together uh, all our strengths in this uh, uh, Danube region and uh, we try to um, c um, build capacities to strengthen our capacities and it, I think that we achieve something. So we have a good basis for, so for the next activities. Um, yeah, and this uh, is maybe just overview of our network we have, which is just a part of, but maybe more important. Uh, the, the cluster itself was namely uh, mostly dedicated to the network uh, on all levels. Um, first, to take care about the members, uh, to take care to, to give them, uh, so I would say, it, uh, some uh, um, real uh, results. And on the other hand is to, to network, to network, to network. The cluster is synonym for networking. Um, we, we are just part of, for example, of European Cluster Collaboration Platform. We are part of a furniture and woodworking cluster partnership. And also uh, we take part in, in the cluster of clusters inside the EFIC, this is European Furniture uh, Industry uh, Confederation. Uh, there are some highlights in our network, maybe. Um, it's also uh, just uh, high, the last slide is this uh, is just to highlight the, the core of the, uh, the, the cluster itself. So uh, clusters are human centered. We work with people. We, know, we must know each other well. We must trust each other. Then to uh, uh, how to gain some advance or maybe to start some activities. The, the, the first is the confidence between uh, the people. So, so about the question you, you gave me, um, yes. Uh, why we participate in, in uh, cross-border uh, and uh, other uh, projects. Yeah, this allows us maybe to achieve our goals faster. So, uh, namely, the, the, the public subsidies uh, give us possibility to, to move faster, uh, to achieve some goals maybe in a shorter period, is the main. Uh, then also we... Uh, we keep touch with the uh, development, so with the focus of, focuses on development, because we uh, share uh, uh, and, uh, I would say, collaborate with a lot of uh, other partners in other countries, and we, uh, through the project, we also to follow the main focus on development, and then to transfer this knowledge to also the companies, to be in touch with uh, what is going on. Uh, and so this ex exchange of, of knowledge and, um, how to say it, uh, experiences, uh, is, is very important for us because uh, of, through these activities we uh, have achieved a high level of confidence and, and understanding each other and we can also strengthen our capacity to, to this. So each project contributes also to us to grow but also to companies to be in touch with the, uh, some how say it, uh, main development fields. Um, yeah, um, maybe also to to, to stress that uh, this public co-financing project uh, are also, also very essential for the, the uh, how to say it, uh, maintain uh, class, uh, financial stability of the clusters, especially w w in the cases where they not have special uh, regional or uh, national programs for clusterization. So this is the uh, one that must to be uh, activities uh, besides all other I mentioned before, because uh, the cluster or very often don't have an act, uh, how I say it, from the fees with the companies or for some other sources. So must be also focused uh, in this uh, field of uh, international uh, public financing projects. Uh, yeah, we maybe just to, to finish, uh, uh, we also uh, try to, uh, how I say it, involve the companies itself directly in the project uh, to give them opportunity to be directly part of some activities and not to be in the second row and waiting for some results. So be part of the project, doing this, and then uh, develop your own network uh, inside the project. It's so very important. Otherwise, we, we just uh, join the project uh, only in the way if the, uh, the, uh, those projects um, contribute in the positive uh, uh, manner um, uh, to developing the business and the uh, sectorial, how I say it, uh, ecosystem. 
So in this way, we've joined the project, otherwise we just say thanks, uh, we have another focus. Because you just jump, if you jump into, into from the project to the project just for the money, they lost the focus. It's from my side, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Likard. Um, <clears throat> thank you for, for your uh, answers, but uh, I would like to thank you even for uh, putting the emphasis of the importance of involvement of the clusters in the policy formulation. So, and uh, uh, in the morning we see that, for example, the involvement uh, in the definition of the strategies as three now they are going towards the new uh, the, the S4, so con conceiving inside even the sustainability, it's very relevant through the entrepreneurial discovery process. So their 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 say uh, is inside this policy. Uh, Design, but what it is also important is that the focus that you already mentioned on the upskilling and reskilling of the the members. So not only clusters as a sort of agglomeration of uh, of the uh, actors, but having a, a different approach. So uh, being more open, being the real factors, uh, uh, drivers of the change, which are upskilling and reskilling their members in order to cope with the, the challenges. So now uh, we will pass to another cluster, the step cluster uh, coming from uh, Hungary. So uh, we have uh, here representative Mr. Balok, Eva Balok, which represents the step cluster, the science, technology, and education platform for photonics uh, uh, Hungarian cluster. So Mr. Balok is uh, um, uh, enthusiastic and c constant in learning professional, uh, has a bachelor degree in economics and master degree in finance uh, from uh, the Corvinius uh, University in Budapest. Recently has been working on projects of finance and management, and today she will bring to our attention uh, one project uh, called EPIC project. And uh, what we would like to uh, pose to, to uh, her attention is why participation in, a, in a, this project that uh, um, is a, a specific one, uh, and we will uh, see uh, what what we are uh, talking about is so relevant and why it is uh, uh, important that this type of uh, cooperation continues also in the, f in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Adira. So I would like to talk about our staff cluster and uh, I'm very happy that uh, I can be here and talk to you about our company. So staff cluster uh, manager is our non-profit LTD and uh, this cluster is uh, because in Hungary, in south of Hungary, in Saged, there is a Ali Laser Center. Maybe you heard about this one. I don't know if you heard about uh, Extreme Light uh, Institute in Saged. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Yes, okay, thank you. So uh, our main goal was uh, to make a strong group, not only with um, this uh, extreme light if infrastructure, but um, also with local universities, and also we joined two another universities from Hungary, and uh, plus the local SMEs, but can work uh, good with this uh, opportunity, and um, step into the international uh, project with the help uh, of this project. So as you can see, um, Seged, uh, Kecskemét, and Pécs, what uh, are three big cities in uh, Hungary, and uh, these universities joined us, and also the Extreme Light in, uh, uh, Otto Second Institute, and um, 15 SMEs when we start uh, this cluster. Uh, yeah, and then. Um, uh, this LE project was built and uh, it's near to finish, so maybe next year uh, will be everything ready. As you can see, the building is already uh, visitable, so uh, there are already parts in the building what you can visit. So if someone interested in to come second and see how it works, there are all already guided tours, so please contact us and we can help you uh, to visit this building. Uh, so then, uh, about our ideas uh, about the cluster, because here, what is important, how we can work together. Uh, one building is not enough. We need uh, researchers, we need companies, 
we need the help of the local government, how we can use this uh, big infrastructure in a better way. So that is why our main idea was connect to another cluster as well in Hungary. And um, this year there are new um, uh, opportunities, but it's territorial infrastructure uh, territorial innovation platform we uh, also joined and work together with all these group um, as we are a non-profit RTD and our um, uh, what is very important us to to make a connection with the government with the companies with the researchers and the universities um, and make something together uh, yeah, and as you can see, we, we, we have this connection, so we can connect these people together. And um, it was quite hard for us, um, because we are a small company, but we have two great opportunities. We are very helpful that we can join two years before the IH World, because this was the first step when we can go to the international um, market to meet, to meet best practices, how in other countries make the collaboration and we can learn a lot. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, fi 55 joint uh, members to this project all over from Europe. And um, in the beginning, they, we had eight experience. One was our SMEs and um, uh, it's an ongoing project, so it's feel free to join. Uh, you can see more information uh, on the website. So this was one important step for us to go to the international market. And here you see our consortium partners. Maybe you know some of them. And then uh, what I would like to focus today is uh, this year uh, another big step for us uh, was an opportunity to join the EPIX project. We are um, the members, not the leaders. And um, um, EPIX project is not just about photonics, uh, not, not about photonics, it is about smart cities. And our cluster works in photonic mainly, but we would like to wide our um, partners and the um, way of the photonic, way of the lighting, we find a good connection point, what is uh, smart lighting or smart data, how we can join to the uh, smart cities idea and uh, we can make more connection and we can join more project. So this is the EPIC project and uh, we had the opportunity to join, so it's uh, already an ongoing project. And uh, uh, not only for our cluster, good opportunity to learn, but only our class, uh, but for our cluster members as well, because there is a cluster exchange program. It is open not just for uh, our members, but for everyone. So I would like uh, to tell you it's, it's worth to check epicsproject.eu website, because um, uh, you can visit and had international experience to visit another uh, country, another city, and see how a similar company as yours uh, can work. And um, you, you can um, get the best practice, learn the best practice, and work better in the future. So this, this is one of the main goals of cluster exchange. Uh, yeah, so this more about this program. Uh, maybe our time is short. Yes. So uh, I quickly go to my next slide. What is about, um, until now I told you about local things and in connection in Europe, but um, we think that it's also important to keep on our eyes open and as our main project is Photonica. We uh, found uh, a new global partnership opportunity. It's maybe uh, worth to see you as well, because not just Photonic, but biotechnology, healthcare, environmental technology, 
agri-food digital teams or so you can find. So if you are interested, please uh, connect to us. You see our uh, email address. So we will be a participant here and uh, we are happy if someone join for us. Thank you, Mr. Balok. Thank you very much. Uh, the slides, I think, uh, will be available from the organizers, so uh, everybody can have all the elements to join this event you mentioned. It's good even to have the focus on the exchanges among the clusters uh, to connect better the ecosystems. And now the floor goes to Mr. Rodic, that uh, uh, is uh, represent the development agency Preda and uh, will provide its overview from the perspective of IPA country. Uh, Mr. Rodic uh, is uh, the manager uh, of uh, the development agency, working on uh, the um, development, uh, economic development of the area with a specific focus on uh, entrepreneurship, competitiveness of SMEs. Um, he, his presentation will be focused on the result achieved through a project funded uh, through the Interreg CBC, uh, uh, Anger, um, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Montenegro. So, what are the lessons learned from your experience in participation in CBC programs uh, uh, through this project, but even uh, others? And uh, from the perspective of the IPA countries, uh, why it is important to participate in, in this type of projects. Uh, thank you for the invitation first. So I coming from the development agency from city of Priedor. It's a, it's a really honor to be here today. Uh, so you're going to get some, some, something different from, from my presentation because uh, as, as, uh, as Adela said, uh, we are not formally cluster. Uh, we have actually formed a network of creative industry and uh, <clears throat> a network of creative industry as a result of uh, the cross-border cooperation project uh, which is financed under this program of, of CBC uh, connecting Croatia, Bosnia-Herzegovina and Montenegro. Uh, so the creative industry, so why the creative industry? I, I need to have some, some really short introduction. Uh, I heard, heard on some similar event that uh, in uh, practically 99% uh, of all the products and services which are available uh, on the market, uh, uh, that there is a some connection and there is a some point in these products which are connected to creative industry. <clears throat> so that's the main reason why we have actually gathered a, a consortium of organizations. So from, uh, from Croatia, it's a development agency Simura, and from uh, Montenegro, it's a um, uh, Association for Democratic Progress, uh, and uh, we have joined the forces in, in fostering and supporting the development of creative, creative industry. Uh, so our main goal was to support the creative industry, but also to make and establish some kind of cross-sectoral connection with the traditional industry. Uh, because uh, we are coming, uh, the, the partners are coming from the cities which are, uh, which are, um, basically the cities of the strong industrial heritage. So there is a you know, typical traditional industry involved, a metal industry, machine industry, wood, wood processing industry. And um, the core of, of activities un until this project was, was actually to support uh, uh, these traditional industries. But then we noticed that uh, you know, the things are changing at, at the market and on the local level, and uh, that there is a strong in interest, especially of youth, for uh, for the IT sector, for uh, different sectors which are basically all connected to creative industry. So uh, we have joined the forces and, 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 uh, and practically created, created this, this, this project. Uh, what is also interesting is that, uh, and it, it, is, it is important from the aspect of the cross-border co uh, cooperation, is that uh, uh, we have Simora and the gaming incubator Pismo which are you going, I think that you are going to visit uh, in, the, in the afternoon hours. Uh, they, were, they were our main motive of actually creating of this, this project proposal. And uh, it was our main factor of, of motivation actually for, for cooperation. And what, what is also inter interesting for, for this project is that uh, there is almost physical connection between between city of Prijedo, between the Prijedo region and uh, uh, Sisak Moslavina County, so the, the, the city of, uh, of Sisak, which is really, really important because 
uh, it's always nice to have this <coughs> this uh, physical connection and, and, and we are not far away from each other. It's basically, we are some 60 kilometers from this gaming uh, incubator, which is a which is, from our perspective, is, is, a, is a good asset, uh, a good asset, uh, uh, this, this regarding the fact that we are uh, living in, in, in different countries. Uh, <clears throat> so basically, uh, we, have, we have managed to, um, in this, uh, the project lasted for two years, and we have uh, managed to create a, a, a really important infrastructure, uh, uh, infrastructure, infrastructure which is basically support to creative industries and, and a set of services. So we have a, a set of services which are, I, I use this, this approach in, in the structure of the services. We have access to know-how. So basically we have uh, a connection uh, in the gaming industry, multimedia, graphic design, web design. So we, we have a network of, of, of our collaborators which are working and, and collaborating with, with, uh, with uh, the partners on the project. We have access to new technologies, which is very, very important because uh, at the location you, you will see in Novoska, uh, because the, it's, it's the, practically the best, best example, there is availability of uh, 3D printing machines, there is availability of uh, CNC machines, there is availab availability of the equipment for the multimedia, which is very, very important from, also from other aspects, because uh, the cities that they are in, that, that, that which are involved in this project. They are not university cities. So they are cities with, with this, let's say, they are, like, they are urban centers, centers but with a lack of, 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 of university level of education. So it's very important to have this technology available in this, in this, uh, in this particular, particular communities. Uh, of course, uh, logistics, networking, and access to public support measures. That's, that's, uh, that's the, 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 the core of activities which, are, which have been developed throughout the project. And uh, for the end, uh, just a few slides, just to, to, you, to, that you can get a sense of, of what I'm talking about. The, the main issue is that we have a physical result, which are, which are basically three hubs, in Priedor, uh, Novska, and Podgorica. So you can, you can see the, 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 the place in, in, in Priedor, just a few pictures of, of uh, the makerspace, uh, uh, of multimedia studio. Uh, in Novska, they're, they're the creative, creative hub uh, uh, mostly concerned with gaming industry. You will see today a lot of interesting things, believe me. Uh, and in uh, Podgorica, there's the creative hub, which is also interesting. It's, it's on a top of the, of, of the 13th floor. It's in, on a top of the residential building. So it's very interesting uh, to have a CNC machine on, on, on the roof of, 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 uh, of the building with the 13, 13 floors. <clears throat> So basically, we, we, are, we are now network, and uh, what, is, what is important as, a, as an answer to, to your question, uh, it's, um, it, 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 there should be a change of the approach in actually establishing cross-border co collaboration. Because when we changed the approach, and when we, saw, when we saw that we can actually collaborate together with, the, 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 with, the, with our partners from, from Simora, from Croatia, uh, we have established that, they will, that we will have a lot of more benefits than actually, uh, actually uh, uh, deciding to go our own way. So uh, it's better to have a collaboration and to establish some kind of connection because I'm sure that, they, that, that the colleagues from, from Novska, they also have interest in collaboration with, uh, with, our, with our region. So that's, that, that's, that's the first approach. Uh, building links between the local actors is the next phase of our cooperation, so we are getting prepared for the next proposals uh, with, with this, this topic as a, as a core topic. Uh, and also, uh, it, it is also important to, to enable follow-up support. So uh, I know that we are usually you know, uh, preparing a follow-up project during the project, but the, I think that the follow-up support to specific projects should be prepared even before before the submission of the of the of the proposal, so that's that's the, just a few, few maybe I, I don't know if I if I actually answered your questions, but yes. I think that you you yes you, thank you, you thank me. you very much. We are a little bit running out of time. Thank you very much for bringing the view of the IPA countries and to show through concrete examples that uh, the participants will have the, the chance to see during the site visit. And now the last but not the least is the Mr. Uh, Yanis Kalogianidis. Uh, 
uh, is uh, uh, the project coordinator of one project, uh, bringing uh, uh, to the audience the perspective from uh, tourist operators, so from the business, not represented by clusters, but by its own. Uh, um, uh, its own view on cooperation on uh, projects uh, funded by EU. And in this case, uh, uh, the project Me Drive Dive that has been uh, funded by COSME. Um, Mr. Kalogian is, is a product designer. Uh, it's uh, now uh, the, the product manager designer of uh, the uh, uh, MAZI travel and events uh, tour operator. Um, Mr. Maz, uh, Mr. Um, Kalogianis, uh, we would like to know what is the, what are your your lessons learned, but even the benefits that your uh, private entity has gained from the participation in this project, and uh, what are the challenges that, that you uh, encountered uh, during the implementation of this project. The floor is yours. Please, I, I would like to to ask you to stay as much as possible within the limits. Otherwise, it will not be possible to have the conclusions at the end. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Is it a bit loud? So, uh, my perspective is the perspective of uh, a frontline uh, experience, the experience of the market and the implementation of the project, the Midrai Dai project. Uh, first, I'm going to give you a brief explanation of the content of this project. So, uh, Midrai Dive, no, this is the contents of the presentation actually, let's skip it. So, this is uh, on, on, uh, on uh, the screen is the logo of the project, of the EU project uh, funded uh, uh, by COSME program. So, personalized dry dive experiences for the promotion of Mediterranean underwater cultural heritage sites is the slogan and the uh, explanation of uh, the, the contents of the, uh, of the project. So, uh, in this project, we had to uh, design a new transnational thematic tourism product. And there are two main characteristics on this. Uh, we dealt with the main tourism attractions of underwater cultural heritage sites of the Med, of the Mediterranean. And there are uh, four countries uh, uh, that uh, um, have been uh, participated in terms of uh, the uh, pilot sites. So we had four pilot sites for each of these four countries. Um, you're going to understand more uh, further on. And the second main uh, issue of uh, this uh, project, the Midrai Dive project, was the uh, integration of uh, CCI apps on this tourist product. So, seven participants from five countries. Mazi Travel was the project uh, coordinator. Atlantis uh, Research and Consulting uh, Agency from uh, Thessaloniki, Greece again. Novena, a Croatian uh, publishing and digital services company. Uh, 3D Research from Italy, uh, Mechanical Engineering, is a child of the UNICAL, University of Calabria. Uh, Campi Flegre and Budva Diving, two diving centers the first from Italy, the second from Montenegro, and uh, the municipality of Cavaglia uh, from Albania uh, participated in this project uh, mainly as uh, observator. So, the main objectives are six for this uh, project. We have to develop uh, the Dive in the Past new tourism product. Uh, so, the brand name is Dive in the Past for the uh, uh, for the product that we uh, developed. We had to design uh, value-adding services for the target groups, for the selected target groups, to develop marketing and product uh, sustainability uh, strategies uh, regarding to the, uh, to the final tourism product, to raise awareness of the public on UCA sites, underwater cultural heritage sites, and to support and promote the networking amongst, among stakeholders and to develop a roadmap for uh, uh, uptaking uh, to be used in other uh, 
uh, European or international uh, uh, sites. So the outputs, the first uh, you can see on the screen is, uh, are some images from the uh, VR application uh, we developed. So uh, and the main, uh, one of the most important uh, characteristics and uh, uh, outputs of the project it was to, to give the opportunity to the public for dry dives. So we have the wet dives, the physical dives. So we use technology and we use the CCI apps in order to give this opportunity for both for pr promotional purposes but also for uh, uh, to, to integrate as an, as an integral part of the, of the tourist product and also to take out as a souvenir for the, all those who visited and who, who uh, actually uh, participated to these uh, tourist programs. So the VR application, we also developed, as you can see, these uh, cardboard glasses. So we don't actually had to use Oculus or the very expensive uh, application. Um, uh, uh, I forgot the word anyway. You understand what I mean? Uh, in, on the second one, you see the interactive uh, leaflet that we designed. So uh, this combines, is combined with an AR application. So uh, uh, participants, uh, viewers can scan with, uh, after, they developed, after they downloaded the AR applications on their phone, they had the opportunity to, they had the, uh, the, the chance to uh, scan uh, particular images of the leaflet and to en enliven the content of, uh, uh, of, the, um, uh, of the brochure. So they had uh, additional information and in a more lively way. Next is uh, the Dive in the Past uh, series game, uh, an infotainment uh, application, uh, a very successful one. Uh, all of them are uh, free to the public to, to be downloaded from the two main um, websites, uh, not website actually, the two main uh, uh, resource, not resources. Uh, from uh, Google Play and uh, from uh, what's the other one for the from the app, from the app, Apple Store, yes. And um, you're gonna get to know some more stuff about the dive in the past uh, in, the, uh, in the next slide. And then we had a series of videos, five videos actually, one to promote the project, the EU project. The second one to promote the um, the product, the Dive in the Past Touring product, a teaser video for the Dive in the Past series game, and other two videos uh, giving uh, instructions on how to use the VR and the AR apps. So the main activities was the research and development of the tourist product, and the second is uh, related to the integration of the dry dive apps into the product, into the product. Um, here I have to, I have to tell you that um, the product, uh, Dive in the Past, uh, the logo of this product is on, the, on your screen, on the screen, uh, comprised of six, it made a product family of 16 different tourism programs, which can be seen here. So we have the four uh, combined packages, seven days duration each, uh, combining two different pilot sites, each of them. So North Aegean and Naples and uh, so on. And then the, uh, the next um, column describes the packages themes addressed to different uh, target groups. So we have, uh, we designed specific programs for each different uh, target group, for diving enthusiasts, people who already are into diving, uh, for non-divers, for culture lovers, and for adventure lovers. All of them are uh, available with more uh, details in the website of the Midray Dive website. 
So the main achievements are a lot, and we're very proud of them, actually. All of the consortium, all of the partners of, uh, of this project. Uh, we had great numbers in uh, downloads and in uh, the series game. Uh, the videos as well, uh, we have a, a channel in uh, YouTube of this project, and uh, they managed to go very well in uh, in the public, uh, so the, the dissemination processes uh, went very well. Uh, also, the tourist program Dive in the Past won the Gold Award in, uh, this year uh, in the category Technology and Has Experience in Greece in a national um, uh, 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 in the national uh, uh, award ceremony. We. Uh, were awarded this uh, uh, this prize, and also the uh, series game uh, was in the five top finalists in the game development world championship 2021, and also it was voted uh, in the game development world championship in the 2021 in the category in the category fan favorite. Uh, another achievement very important to us, and not just to us, for, uh, for the uh, Blue Growth uh, World, is the organization and the implementation of the second international conference uh, last year on May, uh, with the title Diving Blue Growth, was the second one. Also, as main achievements, can uh, we consider the uh, conversion of the non-divers into divers, because through this project we gave the opportunity to many people to, to get in touch with this world and uh, they decided to, uh, to have this experience. Also, a very important one is uh, that uh, uh, through the uh, CCI apps, uh, we managed to valorize the underwater cultural heritage sites and also via the uh, uh, the protection, we managed to, to, to increase the protection of uh, these sites via the raise of the awareness of the public. And uh, in the end, the development of the roadmap for further use, uh, it was a very useful tool uh, in, uh, in, in the protection and uh, in the um, uh, valorization of the UCA sites. Can I call you? to come to the conclusion okay, because yes. we are running late. The business benefits, actually, I'm going to skip it. It's uh, uh, how we benefited from, uh, from participating in this project. Uh, and I'm going to pass now to <coughs> our recommendations for engagements. These, actually, recommendations are addressed to the public agencies and the funding uh, uh, agencies of the EU, uh, and also to the SMEs. Uh, if we, are, if we, we talk about the SMEs, there is a big yes, go uh, and participate to these uh, to EU uh, projects. Uh, there are lots of uh, potentials and there are lots of benefits. The collaboration among the uh, project partners uh, and the uh, contacts uh, the building relationship with uh, stakeholders are one of the uh, most important um, benefits. And uh, to the, what we would say to the EU agencies is that funding and execution of uh, innovative and sustainable proposals uh, is very important. Also, uh, that uh, we have to aim uh, in, uh, to societal contribution, to the added, added value services, and the new business model development throughout this project. And the strategically tested and supported funding is another uh, very important aspect for, uh, for these projects. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, for Thanks. highlighting the importance that the uh, private sector has to be part in these projects, to extend their networks,
to test new solutions and to pave the way to uh, the transitions towards sustainability. And uh, I would like to thank all the panelists, uh, which provided very useful insights that from the point of view of a program will take into account in the definition of the uh, new calls that would come in the new programming period. Uh, that's all, so I pass the floor to you, Jérôme. Thank you very much to all our panelists, and I, I'm afraid I have to jump in here because you have, you have undoubtedly remarked we are running extremely late and we don't have a lot of leeway because at quarter past 12 we have to be downstairs in front of the venue to get the bus for the site visit. What this means is that I invite you to go outside, grab a coffee, but be back here at half past. We will have a very short intervention of uh, Ms. Kosic, and then we will finish with the closing remarks, and at 12 we have to finish with our session, because then we have to go downstairs. So um, feel free to grab a coffee, apologies for the delay, and then at half past sharp we will be back here. Thank you once again to all our panelists, and um, yeah.
So please take your seats, everybody. Unfortunately, we will have to start again. And I am happy to welcome on stage uh, Ms. Sladjana Chusic, head of the EIB, the European Investment Bank Group office in Croatia. Please, everyone, we will have to take seats now. So once again, I welcome on stage Ms. Ladjana Trustic, head of the AIB Group office in Croatia, for her intervention. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Uh, good morning and uh, thank you very much to the colleagues from the DG Grove for the uh, invitation and for this uh, honor to speak in the final session. <laughs> I would, uh, uh, I have the unfortunate task of keeping you between uh, uh, the, uh, the, the departure and lunch time for you. So I hope I would like to uh, think of this presentation. You can see it as a cherry on the cake. Um, so uh, the, 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 the title of the presentation was Main Challenges for Regional Development and uh, Funding Opportunities. But since most of the challenges to, for regional development have already been covered uh, in the previous sessions, I will, I will just dive into the potential solutions in form of the EIB funding options. So a brief introduction about the EIB group in case there are some of you who are not so familiar with the institution. We are the lending arm of the European Union since 1958. We are governed and owned by the European Union member states. We are the world's largest multilateral lender in terms of volumes. We are also the EU's climate bank. We are an institution that is fully aligned with the Paris Agreement and have set our ambitions in terms of climate targets um, very high. We are headquartered in Luxembourg. And in addition to finance professionals, we also have many uh, engineers, economists, and environmental and social specialists working on the projects that we finance. The European Investment Fund is also part of the EIB group um, and is a specialist provider in particularly risk finance for small and medium enterprises or SMEs across Europe. So the EIB priorities follow our public policy goals, which are rooted in the requirement to demonstrate how our operations support EU policy goals. And as you can see in 2021, we, most of our funding have act has actually gone in support of SMEs and mid-caps in the amount of 45 billion, followed by innovation, digital and human capital, sustainable energy and natural resources, and sustainable cities and, and regions. In terms of the EIB activities in, in Croatia, we have been supporting the country since 1977. And uh, also here we have signed more than 7.2 billion euros to support regional development, strengthen economic uh, competitiveness and boost the water, transport, healthcare and energy sectors. As the EU Climate Bank, we also support the investments in energy efficiency, renewable, renewable energies and also protection of biodiversity and environment. So last year, the EIB group has signed the record high of 760 million euros um, in the country and a lot of that had come out of the European Guarantee Fund that the bank set up. Uh, we also provide, very importantly, free technical and advisory support to our clients and we also allow for blending of our, uh, of our financial products, of our financing with the EU grants or other sources of funding. 
So in terms of DAB approvals in Croatia, again, in, in, in the period since uh, 2011 to 21, as you can see, some of the biggest, uh, uh, the, the most important sectors have been the credit lines, but also composite infrastructure, energy, transport, and others. In the interest of time, I will have to run through some of these slides because you don't want to miss your bus and I don't want to uh, keep you too long. But th this is an important slide because w what is it that EIB products do and, and what do we offer? Well, each EIB transaction is tailored to the specific needs of a project. We offer a variety of financing products, including loans, guarantees, equity investments, but also advisory services that are free of charge. So specifically, we also manage uh, uh, advisory services, and these are Elena, Jaspers, you may have heard of Jaspers, it is integrated fully in the EIB, and our uh, uh, Invest EU advisory hub. Uh, and finally, our products can be combined or blended with other sources of public finances, including EU funds. As a strategic overall objective of, of EIB as the Bank of the EU, in Croatia we actually have support for public and private sector capacity to absorb and utilize the existing EU funds, which, as you probably are aware, are plenty in, in Croatia. Um, so in terms of uh, the uh, uh, advisory, very briefly to say that our advisory services can follow the implementation of the project, the, the, the throughout the project cycle, actually the preparation, so the upstream work, preparation and implementation of the project can be supported um, directly through our advisory services. And we also provide uh, capacity building for our promoters and financial intermediaries to implement financing and investment operations. So in terms of the overview of the EIB financing products, the range can be simply in some most basic categories thought of direct transactions. So we either di uh, lend directly to companies and to, to clients either from private or public sector or through so-called indirect transactions. In terms of the direct transactions, uh, while bankable in principle, these types of transactions also allow the bank to facilitate or accelerate projects by pushing certain boundaries beyond the standard EIB conditions in, in relation to subordination, to maturity, or less collateral. On the indirect transaction side, uh, we aim to share risks with banks and other intermediaries in order to allow them to engage directly with eligible investments. So we work with a number of financial intermediaries in Croatia as well. So uh, uh, in, in Croatia, uh, the support to SMEs has been primarily uh, through financial intermediaries, as mentioned. Support to SMEs for the bank is one of the priorities. And uh, our intermediaries uh, or partners include uh, local banks, national promotional banks. Um, and, and why do we work with them? Because we build on their long-standing existing relationships with the counterparts in the country, with the entrepreneurs, and because of their proximity to the markets and to the projects themselves. So some of the standard projects, uh, project financing instruments that we use are so-called multi-beneficiary investment loans or different types of risk sharing and guarantees on existing or new exposures. So for example, in uh, 2021, uh, in, in previous years, actually, EGF was set up in 2020 as a response to the COVID-19 pandemic to help the businesses weather the impacts, the economic impacts of the pandemic. And in Croatia, uh, more than one billion uh, has been made available to SMEs and mid-caps thanks to the guarantee of EGF through our partnerships with six intermediary banks. So our key partners in Croatia are the Croatian uh, uh, Bank of Development and Reconstruction, or HBOR, Zagrebačka banka, uh, Hrvatska poštanska banka, Erste bank, uh, Privredna banka Zagreb, Raiffeisen Leasing, and um, yeah, I've already mentioned Zagrebačka banka. So uh, in terms of uh, intermediated loans, I, I've just mentioned, we, we lend to these intermediaries who then on lend to final beneficiaries. They can be SMEs, mid-cap businesses, local authorities, public sector bodies. 
and the investments uh, that are made need to be at least uh, need to support at least one of our PPGs. In terms of the EIB direct corporate lending, we also offer uh, uh, financing for large projects that are aligned with one or more priorities of the EIB and that are promoted by a large company, group with private sector ownership or mid caps. And here we these days primarily uh, prioritize projects in, in research and, and development and more innovative technologies. Um, and here in these projects, uh, type of projects, we typically cover up to 50% of the project total costs. And uh, that means that our loans start at uh, a, a minimum of 25 million for direct, because this is a direct investment, it's not intermediated. Um, one project example in Croatia, we have supported with two loans, Valamar Group, which is a leading Croatian tourism company, and the project supported modernization and development of the existing facilities and infrastructure. Um, we also offer venture debt, both standard and thematic, which is a complementary instrument to support innovative and fast-growing SMEs or mid-caps with tailored financial solutions to accelerate their development. So venture debt and thematic finance are higher risk loans that are typically uh, uh, with the pricing linked to the performance of the company, but the, the higher risk is also often correlated with the higher potential return. Thematic finance uh, covers operations where the EIB could not uh, be engaged on, on, on our own because they fall outside of the scale of our uh, risk appetite and risk possibilities, but such operations can be supported through different um, mandates, for example, under InvestEU. So here, a very uh, a good example is a, a, a venture that, that we provided to Rimac Automobili, which you're probably Familiar, familiar with, and uh, where we supported the company's development of high-performance electric vehicles and related components. So we, we supported them um, from, from the beginning. Uh, another uh, example, and these are just examples of financing products that the EIAB offers, and, and I chose some that I thought might be most interesting to the audience today, given your topics and profile. So the European Investment Fund also offers solutions for venture and growth uh, capital from the earliest stages of intellectual property development into technology transfer to more mature phases of, of development. So for example, together with, with Croatian Bank of Development and Reconstruction, the EIF launched first venture capital funds in Croatia so two out of the three existing uh, venture capital funds in the country, and these are venture capital initiative and Croatian uh, growth investment program. And actually, exactly today, I have uh, with me here uh, colleagues because we are launching an additional advisory support for HBOR and the Slovenian bank SID in support of a regional technology transfer fund that was signed last year between EIF, HBOR, and SID. And the fund provides support for business applications of Slovene and Croatian academic research via commitment to a technology transfer fund operating in both countries. And then finally, on the public sector side, uh, we have an instrument that is called Framework Loan, which, an, which is an instrument that enables the EIB to finance a multi-component investment program in line with the predefined objectives and eligibilities at the beginning, but with specific schemes that are only confirmed during the implementation. So the advantage of the Framework Loan is that uh, you don't have to have your specific sub-project schemes defined at the time of the approval of the loan, but they are only uh, defined uh, later on during the, 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 the loan implementation. So this, this instrument can be used to finance multiple schemes over a period of three to five years, and the, uh, the, the pr investment program can cover a range of different sectors. Some of the examples of frequ frequent sectors that are covered by IFLs are public transport, water, solid waste, urban revitalization, social housing, health, 
health, energy efficiency, and so on. So the financing of uh, EIB can be complemented by other sources, as I have already mentioned several times, and which is an aspect that is very important in Croatia. So that means that it can be complemented by own resources, commercial banks, or EU funds, because what is often forgotten uh, in case of financing by EU funds, that EU funds rarely can cover 100% of the investment project cost. So uh, all the, the remaining financing that is required can come from the EU lending. And this cumulative uh, uh, value of the EU and EIB uh, sources combined can go up to 90% of the project cost. And in case of the framework loan supporting energy efficiency, it can go up to 100%. Uh, this is just one slide that I will actually, in the interest of time now, not go through, but that concerns one of the mandates that we have where we are supporting DIB in the implementation of the just transition mechanism that you might be aware of, and in particular, the pillar three that concerns the public sector loan facility and actually is targeting two uh, regions in Croatia specifically that were defined in the Croatian territorial plan for just transition, and those are Istria and Sisak Moslovina. And, and under PSLF, or the third pillar, basically uh, uh, there's a possibility of, of combining a grant from the European Commission with the EIB loan. What are the, to, to, to wrap up slowly, what are the benefits of working with EIB? Well, we offer attractive interest rates to our clients uh, due to our cheaper funding costs and our AAA rating in the markets. We offer long maturity financing that can go up to 30 years, including a grace period. We can finance tangible and intangible uh, investments up to 50% of project costs. In case of energy efficiency projects, up to 75%. Uh, we have a flexible approach to disbursement. And working with us uh, has a signaling effect uh, and quality stamp because we want to crowd in other investors, including other private investors. So because of our alignment and the requirement to comply with the EU priorities, we cannot finance everything, but we finance projects that really have a value for the country's economy. And um, uh, we also, very importantly, come with a free of charge advisory support and, and technical assistance. So the key messages that um, I would like to leave with you are that EIB Group has a wide range of financial products and advisory services. I've only given you a flavor of some examples of, of, of instruments that we have and projects that we have supported in Croatia. But of course, the range is it's much, uh, much larger. We have strong expertise in-house, but also have the ability to easily mobilize expertise in a variety of sectors, including energy, manufacturing, transport, healthcare, education, urban development, and many more. We are ready to support creation economy with existing products and services, and together in deployment with uh, uh, other uh, uh, available EU programs, in notably InvestEU and Just Transition Mechanism by the European Commission um, in, in the country. So, Please do get in touch if you think that any of the uh, uh, presented funding options by the EIB could be a potential solution for you. So thank you very much for your attention and I wish you a very good uh, rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sladiana, for these uh, insights and in the invaluable support of the EIB. Um, we are almost done with our two-day conference, but uh, to close our days, we will have three short inputs as closing remarks, and the first one will be by Roberta, our new director. So, good morning, everyone. I'm really happy to, uh, had, to have had this experience with you in these two days. And I don't want to add more inputs. You already had a lot. I think really a lot. The conference was rich of content, rich of uh, uh, new connections. And so I believe that now it's time to digest 
what you have heard and to re-elaborate uh, the takeaways uh, that each of you has in, your, in, in his mind or her mind. And the connections that the meetings, that these meetings has facilitated. So only, only one recommendation, follow on exploring new ways of orchestrating your activities with the other uh, entities which maybe are completely different from yours. Don't stop to do it. And uh, don't stop to integrate your activity with the, those who are different from you. And this, I think, it's a big and very important uh, question that should be applied in our life in general, but also in our respective activities. And uh, please, uh, uh, go on looking beyond boundaries, the territorial one, the cultural one, and the historical one. Only this way, we will take all the advantage that our, the, our fathers, I mean the fathers who founded the European Union, had in mind. Sorry, but for me this is a very important thing. Europe, United Europe, is the only way to go, but we still have to strengthen that Europe, that Europe that they had in mind, and sometimes we forget this. And I'm happy to be here in Croatia, which is now member of our European Union. And as, if you, see, and you, as you had the opportunity to see, they made a lot of progress, a lot of steps ahead. They are really, uh, really well performing. And this also the other countries, Bosnia and Herzegovina, the IPA countries. So let's look at this area with a big attention. And uh, so let's go beyond the uh, boundaries and let's take into consideration that URADA is here for this reason. It's our objective. URADA is a network of regional development agencies working since, since 1992 in order to uh, uh, overcome boundaries and to learn one from each other. Ne then, yeah, at the end, I want, not at the end, I want to introduce some other speakers, but uh, let me please thank all the uh, members of our uh, colleagues of our secretariat, Frederic, Ivana, Giacomo, and Maria, and let me thank the uh, partners and members or non-members of URADA, Zitzer, uh, Simora, Zadranova, Dura, who uh, helped us to uh, make this uh, event possible. Let me thank also the uh, ECCP, so the platform to which we are uh, participating. And of course, last but not least, let me thank the European Commission and DigiGro who supported this experience from the scientific and the organizational point of view. So let me introduce you, ladies first, Andrea Seperak, the director of Simora, Please, Andrea, the floor is yours. And afterwards, uh, the European Commission. I stay here. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, dear friends and colleagues. So we have uh, come to the end of this today conference. I wish you uh, all the best, and uh, I wish to greet you in front of Simra and regional coordinator of Sisak Moslemena County. Uh, the two institutions managing regional development of Sisak Moslemina County. It is a great honor to stand here today in front of you, and we are really happy that Agorada is held in Croatia. Uh, let's say that Croatians are famous for several things. We are good hosts, uh, we play great football. If you tomorrow in Zagreb just stay on our squares and you will see. Uh, we write and implement good projects. We got a, lo a lot of gray hair because of that. And we like to party and to dance. That's, that's just something that creations do. And one of our traditional dances, I tried to find the English translation, but I couldn't, is called Kolo. It's a um, number of people dance, dancing together. Why I speak about Kolo? 
because uh, it's all about togetherness. You know, color is, doesn't exist with one, peop one person. There needs to be a, a lit, at least four or five pe uh, people dancing. And I think, as Roberta al already said, togetherness uh, in diversity is an European value and advantage. So Agorada is really an example where good practices and good ideas are gathered. Simra was in 2020 by Eurada Choice the best agency of the European Union. Usually we would remember 2020 by COVID and earthquake that hit Sisak. And instead we are remembering that year as we went to the top. So thank you for that. Uh, as I mentioned, it is uh, really important that Agorada is held here and I speak uh, in the name of uh, my colleagues from the uh, Dubrovnik Development Agency, Zagorje Development Agency, Krapina Zagori Entrepreneurial Center and Zadra Nova. Uh, thank you very much for your help and for uh, calming us down when we were ne nervous and panicking. <laughs> And thanks to the Eurada team for trusting us. Uh, Roberta, Bogdan, Jerome, uh, Giacomo, Maria, Ivana, Yip, I don't think I uh, forgot somebody, to the ECCP team, of course. So in these two days, we have shared ideas, bragged a little bit, connected and networked. We have worked on togetherness. So until next Agorada, to those who are going home, have a safe trip. To those who are going to Novska, have fun. Uh, use all of our equipment. Uh, it's there for, the, for that. And I wish you all the best and happy holidays. Thank you. So last words for the European Commission. Mr. Peter Zaga, uh, policy officer of DigiGrow. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roberta, and, uh, and hello to everybody, to those who I haven't met yet. Uh, so, just very quickly, a few key takeaways and then uh, a few words of, uh, of thanks. Uh, so, uh, I work in DigiGrow and a team that is uh, taking care of clusters. We have them to grow, to, to cooperate, and uh, yesterday, Ula. Engelmann, she explained our, uh, our offers, our instruments that we are doing for clusters, so please use them, please connect to us. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, valuable thing uh, there for clusters, for regional agencies, for, for national agencies. As of the conference today, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I think we wanted to do two things. One is to get a better understanding of the Croatian landscape and try to facilitate that it's, it's developing in the right way with our humble means. And we learned a lot of good things here. We had a lot of things that are being done very well in Croatia. Uh, you are very good in the Interreg programs. There are good government programs. Uh, there are some very confident clusters, the defense clusters, very confident regional development organizations. All of them are knowing and and, and doing it uh, very well. It was very interesting to see the triangle in the gaming industry. That was my favorite session, although I'm not a gamer. Uh, how regional agencies, the national government, and the industries is cooperating together. So there's a lot of good things. There are certain things that might need to be improved. Uh, we would like to see more clusters outside Zagreb. Uh, we would like to see more international cooperations between Croatian clusters and, and beyond. Uh, uh, so there are things to be done, but I hope that today you managed to get a good understanding what clusters are for, what they are doing well, and how you could use them in your region and in your country. Antonio yesterday morning said that uh, clusters, they are a response to a need of business and of societal needs as well. And then a few hours later, when somebody asked the Alexander the, uh, from, the Euro, from the Croatian Gleaming Alliance, what do they need? And they sa he said, we need networks and education. Uh, so this, there's the need. There's the need from business there. And clusters are vehicles, tools for networking. Uh, I mean, in, in one sentence, in a in very brief need, and also for education and skills, but... I could talk another five minutes about that. So we hope that uh, you learned a lot. Uh, and we understood that regional agencies are, are key. They are very good. They are very important uh, 
parts of our ecosystems, so we hope to see a very good cooperation between regional agencies, wherever in Europe, and clusters in the framework of our cluster meet regions events and other, other places as well. And finally, just a great thank you. It was a good idea from Eurada to have this event here. Thank you for Croatia to come up with the proposal. You are great hosts. Uh, it's a beautiful venue, very inspiring. Uh, everybody from the organization worked very well. Uh, uh, Jerome, Ivana, uh, you, Roberta. So, so thank you for making this uh, a good event. Uh, and, uh, and the bus is leaving. So enjoy the, enjoy the, the trip, uh, either to the site event or back home. Thank you. So speaking about the site event, um, 